everybody, it's Pete. I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. We're actually going to do something different, and I'm going to let you go behind the scenes into a recent coaching call that I have. It's actually one of our beginner coaching calls. We talk a little bit about trading. We talk about charts and managing trades and whatnot. We get into breakouts and sector rotation and that kind of stuff. But the part that I want to share with you, the part that I really want to ask you to spend some time listening to is the part where we talk about confidence, trading confidence, dealing with adversity, and the difference between what it takes to succeed in life or even as a trader uh, and those who succeed and those who just kind of say success doesn't work is for other people. We get really deep and we get really personal about what it takes to succeed. And this is the kind of stuff that we do in our coaching calls. And I wanted to share it with you today. I want you to know how much I appreciate that you watch these videos with me and you're sharing in the trading journey with me. Um, and we're all on that same path of having great days. And yeah, I love trading and having some tough days. We're like, oh, I can't trade. <laughs> but it's all comes down to how you deal with that adversity. And um, you know, I have something that you know, a big part of what we talked about today, stuff that was from Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone and all of these people that have massively succeeded. So enjoy this video. It's roughly 45 minutes. We really get heavy into the second half of the video where we talk about becoming successful and really what it takes and getting your confidence and maintaining your confidence. So I really hope you love this video as much as I love doing these coaching calls. And um, if this kind of stuff, trading and really going for your dreams is something that excites you and, and has you up at night and something you really want to go towards every day, click the link below the video and just check out what we do. And if it's for you, I'd love to see on the other side in our community. If not, we'll continue to connect here in these uh, videos on YouTube. So have an awesome day. And I really hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so we're going to hop right into it. Hopefully everybody is doing great. Uh, let's just jump right in. We'll hit right away. Uh, let's see, Marissa, what causes a large difference between the bid ask uh, I was looking at Xilinx today, but the bid ask was a dollar fifty. Wow, that's a big one. Um, so I was not even interested in the price action. Okay, uh, generally speaking, there's two different reasons for that. Number one of them is an increase in volatility and a lack of interest. Actually, um, increase in volatility usually widens the spread, so the market makers and specialists can protect themselves uh, from not getting ran over. Um, and the lack of interest is the same thing. They widen the bid ask spread so that they're not exposed on the wrong side of a trade, um, simply because they're not always sitting at their machine the entire day. Um, and that spread widens because of protection, really. There's no other way to put it. There's lack of liquidity. So they can't put themselves in a position where if somebody buys from them or buys off their quote immediately and volatility happens that they're on the wrong side of the trade. So they prevent that from happening with really wide spreads. Um, and the same reason they do that because of uh, no interest. So if there's no interest in a stock or very little interest in a stock, um, they will widen the spread as well so that they're not caught on the other side. Remember, we talk about this um, quite a bit in the course that the job of a specialist and a market maker is to create a fair and orderly market and if there is no market for that, they have to make the market. So they have to put out bids, they have to put out offers. Uh, and if it's lack of interest, um, they'll purposely put a very wide spread in there so that they can't get caught on the wrong side of a trade um, just because they're required to put quotes out there. Um, and that, that's really the only reason. Uh, if a stock is liquid and if a stock has a lot of uh, interest, that's when you'll see the spread get a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's, that's actually a really good question. Uh, Marissa, I have a question though. Um, was that during market hours or when the market, uh, was it pre-market or after hours? Because generally speaking, a, a spread that wide, again, very generally speaking, generally that's after hours. Uh, it was during the market. Wow, that is really interesting. Okay, all right. Okay, cool. Very, very good question. You know what? If, if that happens again during market hours, um, definitely call me out on that. And we could talk uh, We could talk about that while it's happening in real time and try and analyze it. Because that's 
when when the stock has a wider spread like that and it's not trading as actively, that's when a, a, a really good level two and time and sales lesson can happen because the less activity, the easier time and sales is actually to read. So you'll start to see bids on the on the offer. You'll start to see prints on the red and green, red and green, red and green. And the lack of liquidity makes it easier to tell what somebody's doing. So if that, if you happen to see that again during the day, definitely hit me up uh, and we'll we'll discuss it because um, watching level two uh, and watching time and sales at the same time, um, which I think I have another one over here somewhere that actually has time and sales. Uh, don't see it, but watching watching level two and time and sales when the liquidity dries up is really interesting. And you can see here that this is dramatically different from that. You can see all of these shares just at one price uh, at 141.99 in Apple. And then you can see these shares at different levels. So there's plenty of liquidity here and a tight spread. Um, that's really interesting. And that's honestly, Marissa, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, let's see, uh, Vidaya. Uh, I face difficult to keep track of sector-wise ETFs, but I keep an eye on the SPY, the Q, the VIX, and the ticks. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly how I do that right now. Uh, I'm not able to take out action on stocks based on the broadcast call. Um, it's very confusing to enter trades. I take the trades for what you give entry price and stop loss. Okay, I definitely understand that. Uh, I'm going to assume you're talking about the day trading ideas um, because the swing trade ideas are all posted pre-market. Um, I keep the stock alerts to initiate the trade, but when it breaks, I hesitate to take the trade, but I will be convinced to take the trades after the breakout price. Okay, that's actually a pretty good strategy, waiting for the first pause after the breakout. Um, that's pretty good. But I, I, wanna, I wanna just give you a heads up on this part here because that's a big part of what I do during the day, which is setting up this screen. Um, so this, this is a trade station screen um, and these are hourly charts. So the 60 minute charts and I have the major ETFs that I watched during the day. And um, this is probably one of my most valuable tools during the day, because um, I could really pay attention to sector rotation by the hour, by the day, to see if we're breaking any new levels. Like, again, that's what I've been talking about. Industrials perked up a little bit today. The XLV, which is healthcare stocks have been trading strong. So I would recommend setting up something similar to this uh, in whatever software you're using. Um, and in the right-hand corner over here at the bottom is the VIX and the ticks. So I'm watching the major indexes by the ETF, and then I'm watching the VIX and the ticks here. But what's, what's just as important is once you identify something, then you need to know which stocks are there, right? Um, then I'm simply going here, which is just another workstation inside of um, trade station where I'm just setting, I have a list of stocks that meet each one of those ETFs. So we just talked about the industrials Then I'll take, I, I posted these in there a couple of times during the day. We just talked about healthcare stocks, which is down here. So you could see which ones are strong during the day. But I, I want to keep going back to what you just said there, um, Vidaya, because this is a very important point. All right. Um, difficulty keeping an eye on everything. Okay. Uh, so I'll put this back up in here and I, I, your, your point is a really good one, but I want to make sure that it's action. My answer is actionable. I'm not really staring at this all day. Like it's on my screen. It's on one of my monitors all day, but obviously because it's an hourly chart, I'm not really looking at, you know, tick by tick. I'm looking at the trend. I'm looking at the color of the current candle. I'm looking to see if it's above the previous day's high. And that's it. Once I find something that's moving, then I'm only looking at that one. I'm not really looking at all of them all day. Um, if that is not a skill that you have yet, it's definitely one to work on. But to even simplify it even more would be to just have a watch list of only the stocks that you're in and the sector. So for example, if you're trading 3M, again, just for argument's sake, you would have the industrials and that would be the only watch list you'd look. You, you wouldn't watch four or five, six or seven different watch lists or four or five or six or seven different ETFs. Have the major list of ETFs on your screen. But if you're only trading certain stocks, just go into Finviz, find the other stocks in that group and then only have those stocks on your watch list. So again, just as an example, if I was trading UPS and I had only these stocks, 
I know I'm trading UPS, but I'm getting a feel for how the industrials are trading and that will give me conviction to be looking at those stocks. So for example, if we're looking at the energy stocks today, I wouldn't have been looking to buy them at all because all of them were red. So I just would have stayed away from them. Um, but I, I, wanna, I wanna really help on this aspect. Um, it's very important to have data on your screen, but it's also very important to not be confused. So it's better to have less and then work towards having more because if you have too much, then you won't feel confident during the day. So what I would, what I would, um, what I would challenge you to do, or what I would inspire you to do is just know which stocks you're trading, have just a couple of them, maybe three or four, go into, and we'll pull up Finviz right now. So give me an example of a stock that you trade. That, that would probably be a good place to start. And we'll make sure that we can really whittle that down to how to do that specifically. So what would be an example of two stocks? So the EV stocks. Okay, so if we typed in NEO, for example, we know that we're looking at consumer cyclical, that's the bigger sector and auto manufacturers. So let's actually drill it all the way down to auto manufacturers. And if we click over here and go to all, you can see that there's 25 major ones. So we wanna whittle that down to just the stocks that are actively traded. So average true range over $1.50, and you can see how that worked its way all the way down already. And then if we want it, let's just say average volume of a million shares just to keep the list the same. So those stocks would be the ones that are in that list. So when you pull up your watch list and you're trading the EV stocks, you would only be, you'd have electric vehicle and then you'd have that list of five stocks. If you want, you can maybe even put Ford and General Motors in there. I know they're not, you know, quote unquote, the same as these companies started out as born EV stocks, although General Motors and Ford is working its way into becoming an EV stock. Maybe you might want to put Blink in there, BLNK. You might want to put uh, ChargePoint, CHPT, and only focus on that. Um, we watch more because I'm trying to help everybody, but as an individual trader, it's better that you specialize and you might, you might and again, I'll give you advice like a friend, you might decide, you know what? There's plenty of action over here. I'm going to only trade these. I'm only going to watch these five stocks and maybe I'll, you'll only trade, you know, whichever ones that you normally trade. And that's perfectly okay. It doesn't matter if you're only, if you're only watching five stocks and you're still getting paid, you'll, you'll have a much better feel for when those stocks are in play. You'll have a better feel for when they're breaking out. And like you said before, knowing how to have confidence in buying that breakout. Um, and then when you're comfortable with that, then you jump to a second stock and a second group. And that's, that's, the, that's the way most successful traders do it. They work their way over into handling more by specializing first, by specializing first. So if you want, I don't know if you want to write these down or take the snapshot, I'm sure you know them anyway. Um, that's how I do it. I'd set up a watch list with that and make sure you have all those same columns. And that would be the best way to handle it. Even if you only have net change and change from the close, that will give you a lot of data as well to know which ones to be keeping an eye on. So very from, from this morning's game plan meeting right up to now, Vidaya, very good job participating and asking questions. That shows me um, how much you really care about learning. So very, I wanna compliment you on that from the game plan to right now, all right? Okay. Uh, keep thinking I analyzed it correctly and we'll accept the widened stop loss. So you can always, you can always minimize and widen stop loss just by trading less share size. That, that's a big deal. So again, Vidalia, I'm going to say the same thing that I said to Marissa. Um, as the day is unfolding, whenever you're in the room and you're considering talking about a trade or you're seeing something like this, just call me out. Just say, hey, Pete, this is what I'm looking at. What do you think? And then we'll have a conversation about it in real time so that we can discuss it while the market's um, open and discuss the conditions of the trade at that time. That's what I'm here for. That's what I want to do. So I really, I really want to ask everybody to reach out to me during the market. So when you see this kind of stuff, um, to have confidence in the idea, we can discuss it through and we can discuss why it might or might not be a good idea at that time. So that to me is really one of the biggest part of the community during the day. Okay. Yep, I agree. Thank you for that, Marissa. Absolutely. If I happen to not be there, we definitely have an answer. That's for sure. 
So I definitely, whether, you know, again, anybody, whether you're watching this on a replay or, you, or you're here with us right now, um, our community really cares. And obviously, especially we do who work for Stock Trading Pro, we really want to let you know that the best way to look, to shorten that learning curve is to ask as many questions as possible. And we don't mind questions. We actually want the questions because we want to see you get the greatest benefit of being in the community. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mikesh, how are you today? Um, how do you decide reward for a 52 week high or a all time high breakout if there's no previous order flow or resistance? So there's probably order flow. There's really no resistance though, right? You're probably like off the chart, literally. <laughs> there's no there's no place uh, except to go higher, right? Um, so in this case here, this is when we start to use the moving averages. So right now we're actually at 52 week highs or, or very close to them right now, right? In the SPY. So there's no level up there. So what we have to do at this point then is start to use our profit maximizer, which is the 10 period moving average. You wanna let it keep going higher. And then there has to be some level on the pullback that tells us when to get out of the trade. So in that case, the profit maximizer is the 10 period simple moving average. So we're gonna change this 20 to a 10. And that would be our new trailing stop loss because once it hits new levels, there isn't a level. You're basically predicting where it's gonna go and we never wanna put a limit on it. That's why we always have initial profit target as the first level we're looking for. And then if it closes below the 10 period moving average, that's the alert. When the next candle closes or trades below that, that would be the signal. So if we look over here, this candlestick right here, if we could pretend that this candlestick closed below the 10 period moving average, that would have been, let's just say it did, it's pretty close, but let's just say it did. Then the next candle, if it closed, if it traded, not closed, if this, if the next candle after this closed below this one, that would be the stop loss. So you would have trailed it higher and that would have been the stop loss. But you could see the next candlestick didn't and it kept trading higher. So then if we go over here, this candlestick here, close below the 10 period moving average, right? Here's the close, it closed below there. Then the next candlestick traded below that and that would have been where it would have been stopped out, which would have been a good exit because then it traded all the way down here the next day. So you would have saved all that money. It was almost $5, maybe even five and a half dollars. And then obviously we took off and started to get long again. So 52 week highs, it's a very common question. You have to use some sort of trailing mechanism. I also wanna say, and let, let's actually zoom out on this just a little bit more. Let's say you happen to be long and you're like, oh gosh, I don't want to risk all the way down there. Just for argument's sake, let's say you have a nice profit on the trade. Let's say you got long here at let's say 420, just for this conversation. And you're like, oh God, I'm up $14. I don't want to have this thing pull back on me. I don't want to, I don't want to give back $5. What you could do is now you go to the weekly chart and you would use the opening price on the weekly chart. So if this candlestick turned red, that means it traded below the weekly opening price, you would get out then. So there's two different ones when you hit new highs. Profit maximizer, as I just explained, or the color of the weekly chart. If it goes negative, if it goes red, that would be a signal to exit as well. So Mukesh, that's actually a really good question because we're literally off the charts and we're not sure there is no number, right? There is no resistance or anything like that. And you really can't forecast because it's all time highs. And that's really what trend followers do. They don't get out into momentum. Trend followers always get out on a pullback because they don't want to limit the upside potential. So that's a really good question. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So I want to start out here improving my confidence. And, and this is, this is a very important question for everybody. Okay. Confidence comes from knowing what you plan to do. That is something to write down. Confidence does not come from predicting. It does not come from knowing what's going to happen next. Confidence comes from knowing that you know your stuff. I'll give you a good example of this. Um, I've spoken at seminars. I've spoken in front of thousands of people. I go on YouTube every day and speak. Um, I'm a very quiet person. I, I'm not really like an extrovert. I'm not like really somebody who likes to be in crowds or anything like that. But when I know what I'm talking about, 
I, there could be a million people there. I don't care. I have my confidence because I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm looking at and I know my topic. I know what I plan to discuss and trading is the same way. Trading comes from knowing exactly what you plan to do. That's where trading confidence comes from. And I've talked about this quite a bit about talking about trades that work out or trades that don't work out, trades that follow through or trades that don't follow through. And I'm very happy to see that members of the community are starting to use the same language. It's very purposeful that I say that followed through or that trade didn't follow through because I don't want to say um, that was a bad idea or my trade didn't work out. It's none of that. I knew exactly what I was looking for. I was confident in the trade based on what I saw. Confidence comes from knowing what to do and doing it and um, having confidence that you'll do it. Most of the time, traders hesitate because they don't trust themselves to do what they're supposed to. I'm telling you right now, everybody on this call right now, even if you've only been trading for a week, you could probably tell somebody else trading rules. You could probably tell somebody else, well, first thing you have to do is manage the downside and here's the inside five minute candlestick. And if it's above the opening price, buy it. Trusting yourself to do that is where confidence comes from. I'm not much more knowledgeable than everybody else. I am very confident I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Rinesh, I hope you understand that because I'm answering your question in a, in a way that I'm talking to somebody else who's learning how to trade and maybe even learning how to be more confident in life. It's, it's, it's about trusting yourself to do what you're supposed to. So even if we go back to the question here about buying breakouts and if they follow through or if they don't follow through, it's not a lack of confidence in the breakout. It's a lack of confidence in you trusting yourself with if it breaks out, this is what I'm going to do. If it doesn't break out, this is what I'm going to do. That's where flawless trading confidence comes from. Not from predicting the follow through, but from knowing exactly what you're supposed to do. I just can't explain how important that is. It's everything. It is literally everything. Okay, so we're going to jump in here now. Um, just my second year of trading. Okay. So you're definitely still getting your feet wet. That's, that's great. Um, but the fact that you're in your second year shows me that you respect risk. That's a very big, that's a very big thing. Um, just like most newbies entered the market with the basics and chat rooms got lucky and I thought stocks just go up. Yeah. I actually mentioned that today that there's far too many people who started trading last year, which nothing wrong with that, but have not experienced the kind of market that we're in now and they wanna know what's wrong with the market. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the market. This is normal now. We're just not going straight up every day like we did last year. Um, let's see, Helena, I much prefer the language you use. It's so important to manage our mindset to pervert, preserve our confidence and recognize it just did not work out. The trade did not follow through. We pay an expense or gain an income. Yeah, Helena, I'm so happy that you internalize that because those are literally the things that I say to myself. Like I literally try, and again, we're not trading for my firm, but I treat everybody as if we were all trading the account together because I wanna walk everybody through the path that I went down to get to where I am. And look, I think everybody knows trading is, is it's mostly psychological. And again, getting back to the confidence issue, which is brought up a couple of times here, Think about your next trade or think about the last trade, the last couple of trades, very similar to what, what um, Helen had just mentioned. If you put on a trade or if you're about to go into a trade and you say, look, I'm gonna, I did everything that I could. I did the best I could to set up this position and I thought enough of it to put the trade on. Then it's not up, it's not up, you know, then it's not up to you what happens next anymore, except for following the plan. We can't do anything about what, like we had so many stocks that opened up higher today that looked amazing and had some biggest big down days that we didn't expect. But would I take this trade again? Of course I take this trade again. Look at this price action in Peloton. We even broke, we even paused at this breakout level, got a bullish U-turn yesterday, opened higher and went higher for another $5 in that direction. Was I a genius? No, I 
did what I was supposed to do and it just didn't keep going. That's where trading at the highest levels comes in. And, that, and what, once you trust yourself that you made a good decision and then trust yourself to make the next good decision, that's when trading truly becomes a business and not a big loss or a big gain. It's you're just running the business. And you can ask anybody else who's ever had a business. And maybe I had an edge when I became a trader because I actually owned a business before I became a trader. And I intuitively understood that every day is not going to be awesome. I intuitively knew that sometimes it's going to be awesome to own a business. And I knew that sometimes it's going to be tough and you're going to have to battle through the tough days to, to preserve your capital until you get to the other side on, and you have good days and you make all that money back because you didn't throw it away. I knew that from before I became a trader. I think a lot of people who are trading and only traded before still need to learn that. And that's why you, I, I don't know if everybody heard me have some, or saw me have some of those conversations later in the afternoon today in the community. Um, I'm not going to let somebody believe that trading should always work. That's, that's fantasy land. There's going to be losses. There's going to be wins. There's going to be losses. It's how you handle the wins. It's how you handle the losses. It's how you handle when it's boring and nothing going on. That really shows how, how, how much you believe in yourself as a trader. Because if you're doing this just for a quick buck or a quick excitement, or you're doing it just because you want to feel like you're a trader, that's, that's disrespecting the profession. Um, and I really want to teach everybody the difference between just trading and just chart reading. And that's why like when, when somebody gets down a little bit, you know, I want to, I want to make them know it's going to be okay. It's just, this is a rough hour or a rough day, or it's not, we're not getting follow through. And even then, even Shakespeare said, you know, what's, what's that famous quote that he said, nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Trading is the same exact way. Price action is not good or bad. It's up to us to know what we're going to do. So I know, I know I'm getting, you know, going really down the rabbit hole here on, on, um, on the questions, but this is, this is what separates somebody from somebody who sticks around and lasts from somebody who is going from chat room to chat room to chat room to webinar to webinar to webinar to YouTube to YouTube to YouTube from somebody who says, yeah, it's on my shoulders. I know what I'm looking at. Now I have to act like a pro. And that means accepting responsibility and always knowing what you're going to do next. I can't stress so deeply enough. I can't, and, and confidence is brought up a couple of times here tonight. My confidence skyrocketed when I finally trusted myself to do what I was supposed to do all the time. See the trade, put it on. See the trade, put it on. See the trade, put it on. And trust that over a large sample of trades, I'll make money. That's how real trading works. Do you really think like I haven't had losses and losing days over the last few weeks? Of course I did. Do I hate those losing days? Of course I did. Did I believe that was the end of the world and trading doesn't work? Hell no. <laughs> no way. Absolutely not. I'm not trading for the day. I'm not trading for the trade. I'm trading for the month. I'm trading for the quarter. And that's where confidence comes from. It comes from knowing that if you do the right thing over time and you trust yourself to do the right thing over time, there's never a reason to hesitate ever. It's just a question of, of following the edge and letting, and I say this purposefully too, letting the edge do the hard work, which means following through over time. Um, this, is, this is the meat and potatoes of what it really means to be successful. Confidence means you know what to do and you trust yourself to do it. I can't say that any other more meaningfully or, or passionately. Knowing what to do and trusting yourself to do it. It's not trusting the breakout. So get, getting back to this, to Vidaya, it's not trusting the breakout. It's trusting yourself to take the right action if it follows through. It's trusting yourself to take the right action if it doesn't follow through. That's where confidence comes from. Trust me when I tell you, I'm a quiet guy. I'm pretty shy. I don't necessarily need to be around crowds. We start talking about trading. We start talking about business. I light up like a light bulb. You hear me get loud because it matters to me. It matters to me because it's my, it's, it's, 
I, 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 I've done a lot of work to get to that point. And I, that's the, that's the stuff that I want to give everybody. That's the part that is not becoming a better chart reader. That's what's, that's, what's going to separate you from everybody else. That's the important stuff. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right, Helena. <laughs> I do. I will say this, and I don't mean to get too far off track, but I've done a lot of work. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty obsessed with getting better. I like mentoring. I really do. I like coaching. I like mentoring um, because I respect how hard it is to do and how hard it is to succeed. But I have such a deep respect for people that choose to go down the path that I'll do everything I can if somebody wants to learn um, because I know what it takes to keep going. That is what drives me. That's my mission for everything that we do together. And, you know, that's why I put in 14, 15, 16 hour days because every day I want to make this the best experience ever. Um, but it, it, anybody will find it frustrating if they think one losing trade means something doesn't work. That's not trading. That's not trading at all. That's not trading for a career. Um, but that's, that's what drives me. I, I love mentoring. I love helping somebody learn. I, I love getting somebody further down the trader path and, and coaching um, because I know it's not easy. But if somebody's willing to learn, man, I, I, man woman, I, 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 will, I will light up and answer questions until tomorrow morning as long as we're having a good conversation about it. What I won't, what I won't do is I won't force somebody to learn. You, you either want to get better or you're just being lazy. And if I spot somebody being lazy, I'm, I'm going to call them out on it quite honestly, because I know how hard I work. Uh, and I know how hard, the, how hard some of the members of the community work and the right people will stay. I don't know if there's any other way to word that the right people will stay because they recognize that we are truly trying to improve and it's not just about trade alerts. And that's really where it becomes something special because then you're a part of a community of, of like-minded people um, that just happen to be in the, in the trading community. So I hope this was a big help, um, Ranish and, and everybody else, because again, you never lost your confidence. You never lost your confidence. You just need to, you just need to bring it back up. You just need to take it back. You, ju you just need to use it. You just need to trust yourself. And you'll, you'll be amazed at what you can do when you trust yourself. You'll be amazed. I've, I've gone through more adversity than anybody could possibly imagine. And when you go, I don't wish it on anybody. That I will tell you, I don't wish it on anybody. But when you come out the other side because you refuse to quit, all of a sudden now you have these confidence scars that are badges of honor that you laugh at adversity. Because when you, when you come through it and you're on the other side, you're like, ah, big deal. This is just a stepping stone. All right, that didn't work. Let me, let me, let me see what happened there and do it better the next time. Uh, look, I'm not college educated. I have one semester of college. Uh, before I became a trader, I worked at my family's deli back in the 1980s. So it, I hate to sound so corny, but if I could do it going from slicing bologna to where I am right now, uh, I live in a beautiful house on the Intracoastal. And that's because I save my money. I am smart with my money and I am constantly learning. I don't have a college degree. You know how many jobs I couldn't even apply for right now just because, because I had one semester of college when I went to St. John's University in New York. After that, I just got the entrepreneurial bug and, you know, the path has been up and down, but you, when you, when you get smarter, you get, you, you, when you get smarter and continue to work hard, you, you're surprised, you get surprised about how many more opportunities open up because you just refuse to quit. So if, if I could be an inspiration for anybody, I want to be an inspiration for it. I know people don't like to be role models. I love mentoring. I, I, I love helping. I really, really love helping. Uh, how did I get interested in trading? That's actually a really interesting question. And it, go, it actually goes back to my family's deli. 
Um, I don't know if anybody has ever worked with their family before, but I worked with my younger brother and I worked with my mom and um, I really felt like I was underachieving, but I wanted to still be an entrepreneur. And I really thought long and hard about what kind of business could I open that I, if, if, if I, if it was based on my skill had unlimited upside potential and I would be able to make my own hours while still being an entrepreneur and trading was the first, first avenue that I went down and I never looked back. And actually, interestingly, that was when I turned 35. So I never traded a stock in my life until I was 35. And the first stock was Cisco. I traded 500 shares of Cisco in uh, April of 2000. That was the first trade I made. Um, but I became a trader because I, I, I had this burning knot in my stomach that I felt like I was underachieving and I just, I couldn't take it anymore, but I still wanted to be an entrepreneur. I, I remember this vividly and I'm sorry if I'm getting off track, but I remember this vividly. I was standing in our deli on a Saturday afternoon in December. It was a cloudy out the typical day in New York where it looked like it was going to snow. It was a winter day. And I remember looking out our front window thinking I was in a fishbowl. And everybody else was on the outside and I was on the fishbowl and I couldn't get out. And that was kind of the turning point for me where I was like, I, just, I can't, I can't keep underachieving. And I just, I, there was something inside of me that was calling me to do something different, something bigger. Um, and I, I just, I just went in that direction. You know, when you take the first step, the next one gets revealed and, um, you just keep going. You know, there's this old book that I bought by uh, a guy uh, called the, A Rich Man's Secret uh, way back in the day. I think I bought it in like 1995. And it really comes down to life. Has, has anybody ever heard about um, uh, Clement Stone? Does anybody know Clement Stone? He, he learned from Napoleon Hill. It's a long story. He owned an insurance company, but he lived his life saying he was an inverse paranoid. Now, obviously, everybody understands what it means to be a paranoid. You think like everybody's out to get you or that kind of thing. Clement Stone went through life believing he was an inverse paranoid, which basically meant that he lived his entire life thinking that life was conspiring to help him. Think about that. Think about that. Life is conspiring to help me. So anyway, getting back to the book that I read, the whole book was basically around that same topic that life becomes magical when you wake up and realize that everything is happening to help you. You don't see anything as good or bad anymore. And you especially don't see things that are perceived as bad as bad anymore. You perceive them as why everything then becomes, why was that sent to me? Why was that sent to me? And when you keep going through life with that kind of a thought process, literally life becomes so magical that everything that happens is a divine guidance to get you to where your dreams are. And I'm not throwing religion or anything like it. We can call it infinite intelligence or whatever you want to put it on it. Um, but life becomes magical at that point because nothing is really adversity anymore. You just see it. Okay, why was that sent to me? And when you take that down to the trading level, you're like, okay, what happened there? It's not good or bad. It's what happened there. And then every single trade becomes this amplification of learning and you're not closed. It's not a closed loop anymore. Now it's a feedback loop where every single decision you make in trading becomes a magical process of improving every day. And look, I know we're getting very personal right here, but that's how I live my life. Um, and that's how I went from owning a deli to having a trading firm with 300 people uh, trading my money all over the world. Um, and my office was on 34th Street and 7th Avenue in New York City. Um, I did that just because I chose to see where I wanted to go and I didn't let anything stop me from getting there. And um, I'm not saying that for me, I'm saying that for you. I know what I went through and I know how my life has been affected by having this mindset where I just refuse to let anything or anybody tell me I can't do something, never mind a bad day or a bad trade. That's just like, that's nothing. That's just feedback. And that's where confidence comes from. When you, when you, when you, you take a step and you learn and you take another step and you learn and you see everything as feedback, your confidence is growing regardless of what happens. You're not, your confidence isn't getting shattered. It's growing because every single thing that happened, you say to yourself, why was that sent to me? And everything becomes this giant feedback loop of getting better.
And that's, 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 that's what goes on in my brain every day. It's um, I've accomplished a lot and, and everybody here knows me. I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm not that kind of a person at all. I'm saying it to inspire you that anything, literally anything is possible. Um, obviously within the realm of physics, uh, like I'm never going to be six foot five, but um, anything is possible if you, if you associate with the right people and you refuse to quit. I just, I can't say it any other way. I'm living proof of it. I am literally living proof of it. I mean, I, nobody knows I never went to college. Nobody. I don't, I don't really tell that to anybody. I mean, it's not really anything I need to have a conversation about, but when people find out, they're like, oh my, really? I'm like, yeah, everything I have is because I picked a direction and I just said, nothing's going to stop me from getting there. And that's where unshakable confidence comes from. I, I used to do seminars, like we used to do three, four, 500 person seminars in New York City and Chicago and all over the, all over the world. I went to uh, Ireland to do seminars. Um, you know, business partners flew me there and whatnot. And who the heck was I to be doing a, a, a seminar in front of 500 people in New York City at the, at the Marriott at Times Square? Who was I? I was the guy who was prepared to be there. I was there because I was the guy who had something to share. That's why our confidence comes from. I didn't care how many people were there. I had something to say and the right people were going to hear it the right way. And trading and life and everything along those lines is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not what happens to you. It's how you view it and then what you do next. I have a, I have a tattoo. Like, I don't tell anybody about my tattoo, but my tattoo is, is um, life is not what it seems. Seek the impossible, which is never more than a step away. That's the tattoo that I have. And that's how I live my life. And when you start to believe that, amazing stuff starts to unfold. It's not that I don't have bad days. It's not that I don't have losing days. It's not that I don't have losing trades. It's none of that. It's how I choose to view them. And then the next step I take. That's what separates somebody from someone who complains and say it can't be done from somebody who says, I'm going to keep going until I get there. And that doesn't matter if it's a bad trade, a bad breakout, a losing day, a tough week. Recharge and come back. Recharge and come back. That, that's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. When I tell people I don't have a college degree, they don't believe me because of some of the stuff that I've done. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that for me. I'm saying that for everybody who listens to this. It's about going in the direction that you want to go confidently because you're on a mission and nothing is going to stop you. I have bad days just like everyone else. Just like everyone else, I have bad days. I just don't, I don't stay in them. I don't stay in a bad trade mentally. I don't stay in a trade that I just lost money. I, I, I go right to the, I take the next step. I take the next step. That's what matters. That's the stuff that matters, not the perfect entry signal. Yeah, I love that quote. That's a great quote. That's a very good quote, Jerry. Um, so let's see, we'll finish up here with, um, I, I, look, by the way, um, I know that was way off track, but this is a beginner call. And I really do believe that these are some of the most important uh, conversations that we can have. Because I do think that some people think that there's an easy button for success. There's a clear path, but that doesn't mean it's easy. There's a big, there's a big difference between the two. Uh, let's see, Griselda, if big money doesn't change by the hour. Why does the stock fluctuate up and down so much in the day? Sometimes individuals still have the power to make it fluctuate. Generally speaking, that happens if there's light volume or there's nothing new. So they're essentially making a market back and forth especially in today's market, back in the day when, when there was less computers doing the trading, specialists and market makers would control a stock and they actually wouldn't move. The stock wouldn't really go anywhere. Uh, but today, because of all the algorithms trading, you'll see a lot more back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, if nothing new is happening, simply because the algorithms are trading back and forth with themselves. Uh, the last time I read this statistic, and maybe somebody can confirm this for me, 
But the last time I read this statistic was that 75% of the volume that's done in the market right now is by computers. 75% of the market is computer driven trading. That's a staggering number. So that's why it fluctuates during the day so much, even if there's really not that much going on. And especially now because something's not going on, because if there's no order flow pushing a stock in one direction, supporting the bid, um, it can happen more often because there's no significant uh, liquidity at each price level. Uh, let's see, I just wanna refresh here and make sure we got everybody. Okay, everybody, it looks like um, we got everybody. I, I want you to know how much, again, it's five o'clock at night. Um, you're all here learning and we just, um, we just got a little personal and I don't mind that because you're showing me how much you want to improve and how much this means to me and means to you. Um, so I don't mind getting personal like that because I want everybody to know how much I care about your succeeding um, and what I went through to even get to where I am now. So I, I got your back. I got your back. It's just a question of participating. That's all I ask from you. Okay. All right, everybody. I'll have the video up as soon as possible and um, I'll speak to you soon. Have an awesome night, everybody. I appreciate it. Have a nice night.